Warning, some contents may be disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Just over 10 years ago, I was dating my first ever girlfriend. We had just gone public and came out to our parents officially. At that time, I was 15 and female and she was 16 and female if memory serves. Both of us lived in accepting households and went to an accepting school. However, for whatever reason we went public, she went fully off the deep end for her final year together. I will quickly mention that she was really abusive throughout our entire relationship. I had just gotten out of an extremely abusive household, so... I had a hard time recognizing the danger that I was in. It somewhat felt normal, but it got particularly bad this one night, when she snapped, I guess. I'm hesitant to attribute her behavior solely to a psychotic breakdown. I think she was an evil person genuinely. To summarize the lead up to this quickly, she had recently, within about five months leading up to this, told me that she had seven souls living within her, all of which hated me. They were all men from the Victorian era, more or less. She lost herself to these men as each one emerged so she would abuse me in a unique way. I'm going to give them aliases, even though they're not really real, and I'm still afraid of her. Were them, I guess. Duke. Duke liked to choke me in my sleep. Harold hit me. Han would try to cut me with knives when I was sleeping. Theo would ignore me or give me silent treatment. Gerald would force himself on me while sleeping. And Tim would pick apart my appearance and bully me. But Alex. Alex was the worst and the entity that I had to deal with the most towards the end. Alex was the present one this evening. He'd play paranormal activity and torment me with the creepiest shit you've ever seen. He would sing in the corner of the room in the dark. He would mutter to himself constantly. He would smile at me while saying things like, You'll die soon, or You don't have to fear me when I'm unarmed. He was into knives and sharp things. He never self-harmed, but would try to harm me regularly. He also convinced me that if I ever left him, he would kill me. I was 15, so I believed it. You may be wondering at this point where our parents were in all of this. My parents had just freshly divorced and custody was being settled. So I stayed at my partner's place on the weekends and during some weekdays due to it being safer. Things were so messed up in my own household that it genuinely seemed safer at that time. This is also where my hesitancy comes in with the legitimacy of their psychosis. Whenever their parents were around, they would snap out of it, like literally a light switch. They could turn the crazy off and on like it was nothing, which made me think that they did this with the intention of harming me not as a cry for help. Fast forward to the afternoon it happened, my final straw. We were downstairs, Alec slash my girlfriend and myself were watching TV. Their parents were going to be out for the whole day and upstairs was their older sibling who was a complete hermit. They kept to the room with soundproof headphones on. Well, Alex also hated this person for no real reason. I was sitting at the downstairs kitchen table, working on some homework, when I hear Alex start humming in the corner. I turn around and ask if they're okay, but they do the creepy smile and nod thing. I went into freeze mode, and then I just went back to my homework while keeping a close but discreet eye on them. It always got bad for me when I reacted, but I had a feeling that they were about to have a violent outburst. They started walking over to the kitchen, still humming, but there was a shake in their voice that I hadn't heard before. 
I looked up slowly and saw that they were taking a large paring knife out of the knife block. And I remember my adrenaline started to kick in, and I looked around for ways to defend myself. To my surprise, they started walking away from me, not towards me. I watched them walk down the hallway and towards the stairs before they exclaimed, I'm going to freaking kill you, I presumed to their sibling. Something came over me, and before I knew it, I was booking up the stairs trying to stop them as they started running, knife in hand, up the stairs. I grabbed their pant leg and pulled them down a few steps. We both collapsed as their sibling opened their bedroom door and asked what was going on. Alex at this point turned around and struck me with a knife leaving a gash on my arm and shoulder, and I retreated back downstairs as they calmly called out to their sibling. Nothing. I, I just tripped. I'm okay. Thanks. I ran to the kitchen downstairs, texted my parent to come and get me, and started cleaning and bandaging my arm. Alex returned at this point, and as soon as we made eye contact, they dropped the knife. They walked into the kitchen and sat on the floor and started singing to themselves while rocking back and forth. I was stunned, literally going into shock, and I stared at them, bloody tissues in hand and informed them that I was done with this bullshit and I was going to wait outside for my parent. They began crying through the song they were singing and still smiling like a maniac. I never went back after that. I broke up with them over the phone about a week later. They sobbed and told me that they'd get rid of their souls and that she still loved me. I didn't listen. I just hung up and that was that. She even dropped out of school and I literally never saw her again after that. Years later, I found out that she started dating this friend of hers that I was also familiar with as a teenager. Then found out that she was cheating on me with them for the entire time that her and I dated. I tried to feel bad for her for years, but honestly, I'm still healing from the several attempts at my life. It's hard to feel bad for an abuser, let alone an attacker. So, thank you for letting me get this out of my chest. I've been in therapy for this recently, and I wanted to share it to kind of reflect on it also. If you have any questions or need clarification, let me know. I left a lot of information out just to keep this short. Back when I was single and I used some online dating pages, I had a few dates that were probably in the category of awful and painful but only one that was really creepy. There was one time that I had matched with a girl named Cindy, and we talked for a bit, hit it off, you know? The basics start to a good thing when it comes to dating. And after chatting it up, we decided that we would want to meet for dinner the next night. We meet up, and she's exactly as she was in the pictures, and she was incredibly friendly, we had a quick conversation outside the restaurant and then we went in to get our food. The dinner started out as perfect as it could have. And about 20 minutes in, after we had gotten our drinks and put in our food order, I noticed that there was a woman sitting at a table a few spots down that was glaring at me. At first, I thought she was staring at something behind me. I was at the wall and there was nothing to stare. I mentioned it to Cindy and I said, Hey, there's a woman that is sitting behind you. She's staring daggers at me right now. She put her hands over her face and said, Oh God, blonde, long hair, glasses. While this was a vague description, it was exact. This woman was blonde, had long hair, and thick glasses on her face. I told her that she was right and asked if she knew her. 
I come to find out, this woman that was murdering me with her eyes was Cindy's ex-girlfriend. I had no problem that Cindy was for both teams. What I had a problem with was the fact that I thought that this woman was going to legit murder me at a moment's notice. I asked if I should be concerned, and she said probably not, which was not at all convincing. And after a few moments, our waiter brings over our food, while we thank him and then he walks away. No more than 45 seconds later, Cindy's ex stands up and walks over to our table. Hey, Cindy. Uh, leave me alone, please. At this point, I could tell that Cindy and this woman did not break up in good terms. Cindy's face was visibly red, and I could tell that she was having a bit of a panic attack. Please, just go away. I don't like this one, the other woman said before she grabbed my drink off of the table and practically heaved it at me. She then said, See you around, to Cindy, then looked over at me and told me to watch my back and then walked away. Like that wasn't the most terrifying thing she could have said to me. So there I was, soda covering my food, my shirt and my pants, and the look on my face was probably one of complete and total shock. But thankfully, the waiter had actually seen what happened, so he rushed over and told me that he would get the manager and he would get the food taken care of. I wasn't really concerned about the burger, I was more so worried about Cindy and maybe a little bit for myself. By this point, Cindy was actually in tears. I asked her what was up with that woman and if she was actually in any danger. Honestly, I was just trying to gauge the situation and figure out if I needed to call the cops. She then proceeds to tell me that Amanda, the ex, was pretty much a stalker at this point. She had followed Cindy around on each date she had, ruined her relationships, and had even literally stabbed her last boyfriend. She said that it was only in his hand that he was completely alive and fine, but that he had broken up with her after this. She said that every time she thought Amanda was going to be gone for good, she would appear the minute that Cindy tried to move on. But the worst part, this has been going on for two full years at this point. She said that she'd filed a restraining order she contacted the police, and nothing was ever being done about it. She said that, for some reason, the authorities were taking it lightly, and that they weren't really doing much to keep Amanda away. She told me that the stabbing incident had happened over three months ago, and that she waited this long to see if maybe it would work to get rid of Amanda. Well, it didn't. Amanda was very much there, and very angry. At the end of the date after we had dinner, and talked more about this Amanda, Cindy told me that it was best that we didn't see each other again. She apologized and said that if Amanda ever disappeared entirely, she would give me a call and then maybe we could try again. I agreed and we went our separate ways. On my way home, I called my brother to tell him what had happened and he honestly laughed at me. He then told me that I was played, and that Cindy was just trying to get free food, and that Amanda was her wingwoman. I started to believe him, and I was actually a bit upset that I had fallen for it, and that they were such good actors. That is, until the next morning. I got up and got my coffee, then went to take my dog for a walk, when I saw the end result of Amanda's anger. My windshield was smashed and all four of my tires had been slashed. On top of that, the phrase, she's mine, was spray painted on the hood. Obviously, I called the police, got the report and made the insurance claim. Thankfully, I had good coverage. I also sent pictures to my brother and asked if he still thought that I was being played. In the end, I never spoke to Cindy again 
and I didn't message her to tell her about the damage to my car. I told the police about the night before, but they didn't really seem interested. Every now and then, I start to think about Cindy and I wonder if she's out there, if she's doing okay. I really do worry that Amanda may lose her mind and attack her one day. I guess my final thought to Amanda, the absolute psychotic ex-girlfriend of Cindy, I hope you and I never meet again. I met Trent when I was 30 years old. We met in a relatively old-fashioned way, mainly because I've always shunned online dating and I prefer meeting people face to face. I've always trusted my gut instincts when I met people and we met at a town dance. I come from one of those country towns where everyone knows each other and there is a strong sense of community out here. While people are suspicious of strangers, they tend to turn a blind eye to bad behavior from people inside the community. It is one of the most frustrating parts of living in a community like this. And despite this, I love my hometown. Trent, it's a nickname by the way, was the cousin to one of the more well-established families in the town. If you're not from these small towns, it can be hard to understand, but essentially, many of their family have important businesses and own a considerable amount of property. Trent wasn't raised in the town and was raised in one of the big cities. Trent was charming, sweet, and caring. Everyone told me how lucky I was to be with him, and if we got married, I would be set up for life. We dated for nearly two years before we moved in together. Six months later, we were engaged, and he told me how he wanted to look after me. I've been raised by a long line of independent women who want to make sure that they make their own money. And over time, I was worn down by the promises and the hope of an easy life. I let him take care of the finances. We lived a good life, regularly going on expensive trips and restaurants new clothes, and a lot of items that I didn't really need. I was living the good life. My friends frequently told me how jealous they were that I found someone like this, and I thought that I was blessed too. Whenever I tried to conserve our power usage, Trent would reassure me not to worry and that it was covered. I didn't like this. It was wasteful. Trent and I talked about having children together someday, what we would name the kids, how we would raise them, and what we wanted for our family. Trent wanted a massive family with around seven children. I'm not young by any means, and didn't really think that I could have that many. I told him this, and he was okay with it. I had three kids with him, who are my world, and I love each of them, and over time, my focus changed from us having a lifestyle around going out and socializing to raising our children. I don't think he liked this as much and went out of his way to spoil our kids, buying them whatever they wanted whenever they wanted it. I told him that it was bad to spoil the kids, and so in the children's eyes, I was the big and mean mummy. He told me one day that he wanted to leave the quiet country town that we had called home, a place that I lived all my life. We talked about it and looked for places that we could go. He seemed really panicked for some reason, but wouldn't tell me what was wrong. I kept asking him if I could help, and he got really snappy at me one day and even punched the wall when he got so worked up. This wasn't the same man that I married. I woke up one day and all of his things were gone. He took a bag, left an apology note, and I called everyone. His family, his friends, the police, and there were no signs of this coming. Our children were so scared for their father and missed him terribly. It was when I found out the stash of bills and credit cards that had been taken out using my name. 
I stared in shock at them. He hadn't been paying the bills, and there were final notices approaching. I had my first panic attack and woke up on the floor. I thought it was a nightmare, but it was reality. I called up the bank and utilities company, and anyone who would listen to me. I called my mom and my friends. I was terrified about what would happen. I was scared that I would lose my house, and I called my husband's number, begging him to come home and to sort all of this out. It turns out that Trent had been in debt and had done this sort of thing before. There is a police investigation, and I couldn't believe how stupid I was. It was taking years to properly clear my name and my credit. Financially, he destroyed me, and I wish I kept working to keep up my skills in the job market. But luckily for me, a family friend heard of my situation and gave me a job, advice, and also a place to stay while things were being sorted. It was hard on the kids. They were used to getting whatever they wanted, and then they had to make do with whatever they had. They asked where their daddy was all this time, and I'd lie to them, telling them that he loves them and he would come home someday. I try to look for him on social media when I have spare time. One time I found him, and he was already with another woman. As the investigation went on, I discovered that I wasn't the only woman that he conned and if he isn't stopped, I won't be the last. Ever since, I have been trying to repair my life. I'm trying to get a divorce, and at first, his family tried to brush it off or blame me for whatever happened. I'm not going to be silenced over this. Some of the friends I had when I was living the high life disappeared when I needed them. Here is the advice that I have for any young woman or young man, or whatever out there. Don't blindly trust someone to manage your finances. Always at least, be involved in the process and keep an eye on your money. If possible, also keep up with your skills in case something happens where you need to rejoin the workforce. Because I really wish that I did. And here are the top comments for my last video. And here's the riddle for this video. Hello everyone, it's your creepy sister here. Thank you so much for watching the video. I really appreciate each and every one of you. But I would also like to thank my amazing patrons, my top tippers, and my dearest channel members. Thank you very, very much. I really appreciate it with all of my heart. If you want to support the channel further, you could also choose to become a patron, a tipper, or a channel member. But remember, it's appreciated, but never a requirement. I would also like to announce that we have merch now. The link is in the description of the video, along with all my other social media links, like my Discord server, Twitter, Instagram, and others. You can connect with me and send your stories there. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't yet, and comments are highly appreciated. And remember, your fear feeds me.